All right, we're broadcasting. Welcome to the Rick Fuller podcast presented by Rick Fuller, team leader of the number one real estate team in the San Francisco Bay Area and Sac County for most recent sales according to Zillow. Rick is a community leader, national real estate coach, and real estate investing expert. I'm Christina Morales, a writer and marketing specialist, and Rick is my dear friend and mentor. Today we're answering a question that we've had a ton of people ask us, what makes the Rick Fuller team different? And in this current world situation, a lot of people are looking for options. Should you become a real estate agent, or if you're an agent already, should you um, stop being a solo agent and join a team? So today on the call, I have Brian Donnelly with me. He is the Director of Expansion on the Rick Fuller team, and I'm so glad you're here with me today, Brian. I am excited. One of my favorite topics to talk about with uh, people we run into that we know and agents who are out there trying to figure out, especially sometimes uh, new agents uh, or even somebody really experienced that uh, has heard this word team and want to know what, what does that really mean? Exactly. So, um, you have a lucrative past. You were in retail um, marketing. You were in a big retail company, and you switched over recently to join the Rick Fuller team. Can you tell me a little bit about your background and your journey? Yeah, for sure. So, I, at first, I've known Rick for about 15 years. Um, we've been working with uh, local foster and homeless kids um, for those 15 years, and uh, we've been close friends. And uh, we both have a similar start. Uh, we both worked in retail, and I've had the pleasure of working for some very well-known uh, brands uh, in the United States, and actually, they are international. And uh, I think I'm wearing one of them right now. But <laughs> yeah, I, I, I still do, yep. and my family still shops. Uh, actually, it's uh, several that uh, I've worked at. Mm -hmm. And um, my job was, people would ask me uh, what my job was. Well, I, have you ever been to McDonald's and had the uh, French fries? Oh, sure. Have you been to a different state where there's McDonald's? Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, my job is to make sure the French fries taste the same in every state you're in. And now that wasn't the brand, folks, that I, I work for. I am a, um, a t-shirt folder by trade. <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, but that, that was my job. I helped uh, teams, individuals, uh, much like we do here on our team, um, learn about whatever business we're doing and the best way to do it. So. Mm -hmm. And so what caused you to leave that career and then join the Rick Fuller team? Yeah. So like I said, I've known Rick uh, for 15 years. He's offered me, this was the fourth time he'd offered me a job. <laughs> and uh, what was the big difference is Rick had started to make the transition from a tipper, typical brokerage where uh, people are um, solo agents, and he started to go in the team way. And um, I, have, I, I love helping people succeed, and we had the opportunity where I could do that uh, and come uh, sell on our team, and that's what uh, drew me to real estate. My dad was a, uh, a realtor, typical um, solo mm -hmm. guy out there um, doing all the things that uh, all of our friends who um, do it by themselves do. And uh, so I knew it was a great career. Um, I just like to work with people. So. Mm -hmm. And right now we're in COVID-19, we're sheltering in place and people are looking for different options. The way that things have been are not working, but the crazy thing, the great thing about our team is that we already had all of these structures in place and it just proved how strong they were because our team is healthy. We are doing a ton of transactions every week. We're helping people buy and sell their homes. Our agents are busy, busier than ever. And so can you tell me a little bit about the structure of our team and how this time period has just shown how strong we are? Yeah. So the big difference is if you're a, uh, in a typical agent and have the li same license that I have and uh, our different team members have on our team, you can represent buyers, you can represent sellers, uh, you will most likely be marketing, you're most likely going to be you know, trying to get the phone to ring, you're going to be handling inspections, you're going to be showing homes, you're going to be doing all those things. And you're going to be doing none of the things probably if you had multiple clients at the same time. So that means you're in different stages and doing different tasks, having to wear a different hat, literally at the exact same time. 
and hey, hopefully you can answer the phone because mm -hmm. some, you're good and you know somebody wants to, to use you. So the, the big difference for us is that we do all those things, but we have individuals who do those things. And we mm -hmm. teach them uh, how to be really good at it. So if you're a buyer specialist, we teach you how to find the right homes, uh, how to best write an offer. And today it is crazy out there in just right. about every market we're in. And my friends across uh, the nation, it sounds the same in theirs. So we teach them specifically, how do you write an offer that gets accepted when there are 19 other people you know, writing an offer? Uh, we have a marketing specialist. So this is my favorite thing when I go out and talk to uh, to clients, because I, I am a listing specialist also on our team. And so when I sit down across from him, I think about my dad. My dad was great in relationships. He was great at determining what the potential of a particular home was and what they might get it. Uh, but my dad was not the most tech savvy, you know, mm -hmm. person in the world. And today, mm -hmm. you know, where most people see a home before they ever get there, um, the, the key is how do you show up on those devices? And then if, in on a device, how do you show up on the thousands of different websites, the thousands of uh, different ways? What's the best way? My dad could never do that. Mm -hmm. I cannot do that. I can use my phone, um, but I can do that. We have a marketing team and an IT team that make sure that our clients' homes show up at the top. So mm -hmm. we have an operations team. So all the things that oftentimes during a transaction take a lot of time uh, for somebody to do. And if you're not the most organized because you're a really good salesperson, you're personable, uh, you're exciting to be around, those usually don't make the best you know, organized people. It's been my experience. We have people to handle that. And so uh, for us, um, it just makes the job easier. You, you do a lot of the same thing, but with different people. So you get to meet different people. You have variety of your day. I get to be just good about the one job that I'm doing and get really good at it. And uh, that's what it, it allows us to do. Think about when they were building cars by hand uh, before Henry Ford came up with the assembly line. Mm -hmm. We kind of figured out how to assembly line um, this real estate practice. Uh, and be the very best at what we do. Mm -hmm. And I love how Rick always says it's the power of the team that together we're taking everybody's strengths and we're finding, okay, what are you good at? And then we're putting them on the seat on the plane where they best fit. And so, um, I'm part of the marketing team and I love creating the graphic design and doing the websites and, but I'm not a real estate person, like how you can go out and meet with your clients and customers. So every person is important and working together, we can be more powerful and give our clients the best experience. Um, Brian, you interact with a lot of solo agents who aren't part of our team. So together we're supporting each other. Like we said, we have marketing, we have concierge helping generate appointments. We have all this uh, power behind an agent, but solo agents are just working by themselves like the hamster on the wheel. And as you're interacting with them, what are you finding? Where are they at right now? Yeah, so I, you know, the probably there's two things I would say that are most common when I, I it doesn't matter what brand they work for and it doesn't really matter what um, you know amount of experience. They would be frustrations. Period. And one is the word support. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you know, is there support uh, there? Because there's not even our most experienced uh, people in our office. Sometimes there's some uh, something new in a transaction that you personally don't have experience in dealing with, right? And um, we have people because of the team scenario. We have people to help you out in that, and not just What's interesting is, you know, people, oh, yeah, I, I, I have somebody. Well, okay, who is that and how many other people do they help? Mm -hmm. our, our mentors help four people, and they have mm -hmm. a lot of experience. So they are available when you need them. The truth is they teach uh, instead of doing for somebody. So we're trying to, you know, if somebody stayed with us uh, or they want somebody else, we want them to leave with these life skills and this art and this um this job of being a realtor, we want people to represent realtors, not just us, but others so that we can compete against those that are trying to get rid of realtors, the Zillows of the world. And, you know, gosh, hope nobody read that or heard that, but it's true folks. Um, but we're trying to, how do we make this organization super professional, deliver great quality, whether they're working 
on our team or another team. So support would be one. And if you're a brand spanking new, you know, realtor, by the way, if you're watching this and you're thinking about getting your realtor license, that test that you take does not really set you up to be mm. a realtor. It sets you up to know the legal things and the uh, consequences to some, you know, not following things and things like that, but it doesn't teach you what you should do all day long and, and do that. We really do well as a team supporting those people. And oftentimes a new person, uh, because their mentor is busy. The reason that our mentors are probably good. And that means that they're probably busy. In our scenario, we, we become better mentors. Um, and then the other thing, think about this. If you're a realtor, and let's say you're a good realtor, um, you probably are going to get busy. I hope you get busy, right? Mm -hmm. Well, when you get busy, there's this thing called vacation. <laughs> I'm off, right? So what I find oftentimes, you know, and I talk to somebody that has some stress, oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. Uh, you know, I had uh, five transactions going when I was on vacation and I couldn't do it. We help with simple things like that. We cover for each other and not like in a typical, oh, somebody will answer my phone. No, because mm -hmm. we work in a team and then we work in small groups called pods. We know where we're at in transactions. Our buyers and sellers have probably already been introduced to somebody on our team somewhere in the transaction. And so we're able, when we take time off, we take it off. Mm -hmm. um, and that'd be the other big thing. I, I would tell you today, people don't have answers or especially early on in our shelter in place, they, you know, where do I, how do I start? How do I pivot from what I'm doing? I still got to get paid. Mm -hmm. uh, and as an independent contractor, that is a challenge. Uh, those some things have, you know, worked out for unemployment if people needed it. Um, they didn't know what to do. Here's what's cool about the team. We have a collective, you know, uh, group of ideas and while one person might not have the idea, the room probably does. And, mm -hmm. you know, Rick loves to use the quote, the smartest person in the room is the room. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you got to have the room first. And we have the room. And so we've been able to help them. And, uh, and we even help people who don't work on our team. I love talking to mm -hmm. people and just ask them what they're doing. Uh, well, hey, maybe if you, you do this, it might, it might help you boost your business. Mm -hmm. so. One of the things I love about our team is we're so innovative, like COVID hits and we're like, okay, what do we do? Because together we all need to generate a paycheck. Okay, let's start these podcasts. Let's start webinars. Let's, okay, let's learn how to do virtual open houses. So instead of biting our nails going, oh no, what do we do? Everybody stepped up. They didn't step out. They stepped up and they met the challenge. And as a solo agent too, it's, I'm sure it's so difficult to know, okay, what regulations are there? Do I have to bring masks for me and for the people in the house? Do we have to wear shoe covers? Um, how many people can come in the house at, a, at the same time? And so with having the team, you guys bring all that to the agent. So they're not left wondering, they're left with all these tools like, okay, how do I do a virtual open house? How do I social do social media to meet my clients? And what can I do to generate business? Um, be a distance. Yeah, yeah. So I can't. I can't even imagine the spin that you might. Um, y you know, if you started and you didn't know where to go, and and the fact was, man, there was a ton of information. And in a special place like California, um, there are a lot of regulations. Right. And uh, there were a lot of regulations to start with that you had to learn how to do. And COVID. Um, and the challenges there have changed it. And not only have they changed it, it literally changed several times, you know, kind of on the fly. That is a plus two to a team because again, the people who are researching that our operations team uh, and doing those kind of things, they only had to do that. So they had mm -hmm. time to research that. Um, they had, uh, you know, time to, then we decide, okay, how does this affect our buyer's team? How does this uh, affect our listing team? What are some of the kind of things that you could do? And it isn't that we came up with all the answers. Um, it's that we were able to capitalize on the resources that were out there because again, we're not doing it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. So Exactly. And I would love to know your point of view. You're in the workplace, you're in the marketplace every day. What does the marketplace look like right now? And is it a good time to become an agent? Is it a good time to join a team? What does that look like? Oh, so uh, for any of my friends that are, uh, 
that, uh, no, I, I was in retail for 30 plus years, right? Um, and uh, there are many times when you, as you go into retail, it pays pretty well, quite frankly, and most people don't think it does. The truth is, as you move up, it pays pretty well. And it becomes very hard to leave because you have a certain set of skills, you've been doing this for a long time, and so it really, it's hard. Well, I tell you at times like this, friends, and, and I've shared this with my friends on, um, on social media and whatnot, I, I would be spending this time, even now when we're kind of half in, half out, uh, if I was going to make a move, this is when I'd make a move. Mm. Um, because now you should be spending your time um, rather than, you know, wishing that you could do other things like go eat in a restaurant, inside a restaurant, or go to a movie. That's mine. I'd really love to go to a movie I don't rent, <laughs> right? But uh, I'm willing to pay exorbitant amounts for popcorn uh, to get myself in a movie theater. But so instead of some of those things, it's a great time to learn about, you know, taking the test. It really is not very hard. And I say that as, you know, we have, we have, we're about to have 14 plus people join our team who just got wow. their license, right? Wow. Well, so if you took the kind of combined experience all of them had as they went through, the reality is it's a very short test um, and you can study for and pass, but it takes a commitment. Now, then you're going to ask yourself, well, the market's horrible. It's COVID-19. Nobody can sell houses. Well, I'm telling you right now, if you've not got the memo, the market is flat out crazy. Mm -hmm. Our interest rates are the lowest in my lifetime. And mm -hmm. see the gray hair? My <laughs> lifetime is a little bit longer than others. Okay. And it is flat out the lowest. It may be even the historical low. Really? Uh, I'm not positive of that, but they are that low. So what that does is if you're a buyer, <clears throat> is it gives you more buying power. And so <clears throat> it's a great time now because mm -hmm. you can get more house and have the same payment. Mm -hmm. If you're a seller, here's the thing about, you know, if they're selling, there's not enough homes out there right now because the buyers, right. there's so many buyers. So you, if you're coming on into deciding maybe I'm going to make a career change, <clears throat> I'm going to do this thing. Mm -hmm. um, it is a great time to do it. I uh, now, it's uh, if you're on the mortgage side, people get really excited because a lot of refis right now. And but the truth is that that's going to last a certain amount of time, and they're going to have to do you know m m home purchases. Well, the same would be for us. Right now, it's super hot. It's a good time to kind of bridge the gap that's oftentimes there while you do the right things uh, to help people to move. So. Mm -hmm. So if someone was interested in joining the team and first of all, how do they get their license? What, what is that process? Yeah, so we have a school, um, a cap, we are part of a Kaplan school that we um, lead a group of people through over approximately a six week process. Now, what's cool about that is, is that if you've ever been your own boss, so here's the big thing about joining real estate. Oftentimes people want to do that because they don't want a boss. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a boss, folks. Everybody's got a boss. You've just become your own boss. And you may think you're a great boss, but I promise you in personal experience, you're not going to hold yourself accountable and all those things. That's another plus kind of to a team. Well, mm -hmm. the thing with this Kaplan class is, is that you really, you could take up to six months. I think they allow you to take these three classes. Um, and trust me, people take up that long plus get extensions. Um, in this way, it forces you to move through the classes quickly. I did it with a full-time job. Mm -hmm. I was helping out uh, in the office here, running a ministry for our, our kids, our foster kids. And it, I was able to get it done. If, I had to, if we had had in place the cap and class when I got my license done, it would have helped a ton. Plus mm -hmm. there's community. Right, I'll let myself down all day long, but if I gotta go, you know, show up and there's six, 10, 15 people in this class and I got to look at them and say, I didn't do my homework. Right. I didn't get that stuff done, that's different. And I, I think that's probably for most people. So um, then what you do, you take, mm -hmm. you're gonna study, you're gonna do these three, uh, three courses and then you're gonna sign up for a test. And um, the test is 150 questions. It is a 70% pass. Yes, okay. 70%. So it's not stressful, though you get yourself kind of talked into it. 
you take this class and um, at that time you should have prior been, you know, researching different places to work. You should have been finding a place that was going to support you the best, how you want to be supported, that had a great reputation because in the beginning, it's all about their brand, um, you know, to help you with your business and you get your license and you are licensed by the great state of California to buy and sell real estate for others. Mm -hmm. um, it's as simple as that. Now I say that it's not really, it's work. And that's where our team scenario comes in because you have people to lean on. You have people to help you hold accountable. And much as you say, ah, I don't need somebody to hold me accountable. Go run a race. If you're a yeah. runner, mm -hmm. run it by yourself, then run it with somebody else and see what your time is. Mm -hmm. And I love that you don't say we have trainers because training is like, here's the key. Here's the code to the office. Here's how to work the copy machine. We have mentors and coaches and they they take you through each step so how has that helped you you've been um a realtor for a year and a half two years how long has it been? uh so december makes it official with my license but okay. it was it hasn't been that long because i was still working you know another job and doing other things and leave but about a year and a half or probably maybe even less uh that i've been a realtor so this is how it helps let's talk in real numbers yeah. So the average person um, in this, I believe in California is like three transactions in a year. And I actually think it's wow. lower than that, but let's just say there's three transactions. Okay. Let's give them a little bit of boost. <laughs> so I, I closed uh, 32 in the last 12 months. Wow. Um, yes. That's the team. That's not me. I'm not something special. The team is something special. The marketing, uh, the people I've had to ask a question when you're in a transaction, uh, we teach how to do volume versus an individual transaction. How do you batch things? Mm. Uh, where should you be spending your time? It's not what you think it is. Um, there are real tasks, e quite frankly, easy. If you just put your head to it and you did it, there are tasks that are going to make you successful. What you need is somebody to tell you and help you. And the truth where your mentor versus um, giving the training, right. the mentor kind of holds you accountable, you know, to, to those kind of things. And um, that, that's what we're really good about in the team is doing that. Then training, if you think about it, is really kind of a cut and dry um, thing. It, mm -hmm. it gives it to you. It's already been written. It takes in no factors of current market conditions, it, personalities of people. Um, and, you know, here's the thing. When you become a realtor, you're supposed to be the only non-emotional person in this transaction. Yeah. Oftentimes I'll tell you my friends that are realtors, my peers out there that I'm in transaction with sometimes get emotional about these things. We're supposed to be the level headed because on one hand, the seller loves their home. Mm -hmm. They're leaving their family home and they want the absolute most amount of money they can get for this house. On the other hand is the buyer who falls in love. It's got to be the house for me. This is the only one we can buy and they want to pay the least. <laughs> right. Right. So you have these competing things and that's where the realtor comes in. They're kind of the mediator to this whole thing. They're, you know, they're uh, helping uh, people with their emotions. They're helping to make decisions. There's some uh, transactional stuff that you have to do, but really that's what you're doing. You're piloting through obstacles and different things in a, a transaction we have people that take those things into consideration when they're giving you an answer about what should I do? Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. promise you, no matter how long you do this, you're going to have that question of what should I do? And there's going to be mm -hmm. somebody who has that kind of experience. We're lucky. We have some people on our team and in most offices, th these people be high on our MLS. If you rank their sales, they'd be mm -hmm. at the top. Um, most of those people <coughs> don't interact a lot sometimes with others because they're so busy. You know, mm -hmm. they've got a great business. They're really busy and they're trying to keep it up and they don't have time. We've turned those people. We help them with their business and they help others with their business. That's a big deal with the team. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And so what if someone is already an agent? What if they already have their license and they're saying, this isn't working for me. I need some more support. How can they join the team and what does their onboarding process look like? Yeah. So I'm going to be real here. Okay. So, and this may be like, Oh, he's, I thought they might be recruiting me and he just didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, so 
Yeah, it's a challenge sometimes if you've been working in a, a more traditional scenario where you've been by yourself. When you're by yourself in a, a typical office, and it doesn't really matter the name, the brand you have, it's going to be very similar. Um, but when you're in that office, if you decide not to do something, uh, follow up or something, you're really only hurting yourself. You're not hurting anybody else. Well, mm -hmm. in our scenario, because there's no single transaction done by a single person, it's a multiple of people who accomplish each transaction, you're letting somebody else down. Somebody else isn't going to get paid, um, you know, and take care of the bills, buy a dream home, do, you know, do those kind of things. So first you got to decide is a team for me. Now, I do believe that most people work better on in a group than they do alone. Even if they're a loner, they do. Because they can help, there's no way somebody's great at everything and we can help fill the holes. So somebody comes on on our team, we have the same training for that person as we do uh, for somebody who's brand new. And you're like, oh, I know everything. Well, you probably have transactional experience. You really do. The part that you may not have, and I'm, and I'm basing this on the couple hundred interviews I've done now in the last two years, right? And uh, before that, I literally, my job was to uh, talk to talent, decide talent, you know, help develop them, do those kind of things. So it really isn't any different than what we do right now. But the majority of the people I talk to, you ask some of the most simple things that you should be doing. And I was batting 100% on a particular question, do you have a sphere of influence that you actively use? Well, I've actually had somebody positively answer that. So I no longer can say that every single person I've interviewed doesn't. Um, there's one. So, uh, and by the way, they joined our team, just so you're aware. Okay. However, um, but it's, it's things like that, that we, the reason we require that training is to make you good at your job. And we, we have leads, so we don't require that training for you to hold your license to do that. You're an independent contractor. That's not a requirement. It's our team part is where it becomes necessary for you to have certain skills, some exposure to some things, and we would help somebody along that way. And then we'd go back and reinforce what the right habits are, which is what mm -hmm. I've talked about. SOI is one of the examples. Uh, we would do that with you. You also would get to mentor. You would have somebody that is helping you learn our culture, that's helping you learn, um, you know, some of these behaviors that you should be doing every day. Uh, and then I promise you, you're going to have a transactional question. And there is somebody with the experience to be able to answer that. And then we also offer opportunity. So oftentimes those people, if they are somebody who wants to do more, they want to lead. Uh, people, but they don't necessarily want to be a broker or go through that test to be a broker. We have different positions on our team. Uh, the first one's called a lead, and they're that mentor kind of position where, you know, they help a small group, a pod of four to five people, and they do life together. They get each other over the bumps and help each other transactional and things like that. They're part of a bigger group who then has a coach. Every single person on our team has a coach. We coach for two of the biggest names, national names, mm. uh, in real estate coaching. Uh, in fact, our boss, our friend, uh, oh, Ricky the Realtor, he actually coaches the coaches. And so because of that, we have the opportunity on our team to have them all the materials and to have a live coach. And people have a live coach, trust me, go ask people in your office that are making a bunch of money and do really well. They have a coach. We give that to each and every person on our team and that can help somebody too. So that was a long answer to a short question, but. Uh, no, that was great. And it's um, especially during this time when we're all working from home, like our team meetings, we have them every Tuesday have been so invaluable. We have at least 40 people on at any given time and just the inspiration and helping you get unstuck and helping you to do more has been so powerful during this time. And I was even talking to one of our newer members of our team. Uh, he's a broker and he's been in the business over 20 years. And he said, if I would have known about this team earlier, it would have changed my life. I would have joined so much sooner because it's been phenomenal from being a solo agent and having his own brokerage and then managing others to being on the team. He's like, there's no comparison. I wish I would have joined sooner. 
So yeah, I'm he's a great guy. Uh, and, and he's turned into, we get those kind of resources. So not only are we helping him, uh, but he helps us because he has a ton of experience, um, you know, doing this and the weird stuff that comes up, you know, they can help you with. So I know people see the signs all the time and it'll have, you know, somebody's name and they'll say T. Uh, my experience is in interviewing these people, and I'm, I'm not bagging on that at all. My dad had that on his sign also. <laughs> um, but the, I, there is a big difference. We, we are truly a team mm -hmm. because we, we are not each doing everything and it's not a group of each people doing everything. It's a group of people doing one part and together that group of people make a whole mm -hmm. so that's that's the big difference and then just the flat out support we're not just sharing signs and things like that uh we're sharing the workload so. mm -hmm. well your title is director of expansion are you expanding where are you expanding to um what's what's ahead for the team and are you um adding to it yes yes so if we were subtle about the recruit before, this is where I'm telling you, call me. Uh, but hey, the um, I found myself, you know, over the, I've been working for a full a few years, right? Um, and I was always the most energized as we were building. And um, oftentimes a model might be in real estate that they, they have growing teams too. So I will tell you that most places you talk to are is that case, not all, but most of them. But the idea is you have somebody join your office and, um, and it's just another person in your office. Mm -hmm. We only grow at the pace that we can help the person. Mm -hmm. So that means that we have leaders in place. Uh, we put the marketing in place to generate leads. Um, we have some business that we can help the person with in addition to their own business. And then that's part of kind of the, um, in a small way, what would make us expand. So we do have offices uh, around um, the Bay Area. As you started off, I'm not saying this, I'm not bragging, but Zillow bragged on our behalf. Mm -hmm. You know, we're the number one team in all nine counties in Sacramento County. Mm -hmm. um, the, so we are leveraging that for our teammates, our current ones and our new ones. And we uh, take listings, um, sell to people across the Bay Area. Now big I will tell you where we have a big push right now because there's a big need especially in the state of California is in the Sacramento County area Placerville County like Roseville mm -hmm. um, and that believe it or not I think uh, Rick and you wrote a book about the great migration and right. you know when you guys told me I thought there was going to be covered wagons <laughs> and that uh, you know going to learn about the Donner Party again you know that's a California classic right there right yeah get some um, buffalo mm -hmm. for sure uh, but no, uh, the truth is, if anybody ever watches the news or understands, you know, lots of people in the Bay Area uh, move out of the Bay Area. And uh, ironically, if they're not moving to uh, another state, most of them move, uh, almost a majority of them move to the Sacramento area. So we're really positioned uh, in a great way to help those people because um, we're in an area they're selling. So we have a teammate that physically lives there that works out of that area is knowledgeable about that area who helps them and then they partner with somebody in the area that they're moving and so they get this the opportunity to work with the same group of people uh i while we're sitting here i'm literally getting a text on the, this very scenario um really? where okay. yeah we we listed a home one of our buyers um agents representing them on the house they're buying and another one of our buyers agents is buying our house well it, they also have a contingency on their home so there's all these pieces that have mm -hmm. to land at the same time what's kind of cool in our scenario when it lines up like this is we're able to because we we're there's no in between we're like hey, okay where are you at with that mm -hmm. okay we can we we'll try to get another day out of this we'll try to speed up hey what documents do they need no problem i can get them for you we're super helpful that way mm -hmm. and again this isn't, we're not working from one place. We're working from our many offices across the Bay Area um, and people that live there. Uh, and we market specifically in those areas. We're not, you know, just marketing in general. So um, we can be super helpful that way. So the answer is yes, we're recruiting. New, uh, brand new to the industry, uh, experience in the industry. We can turbo boost your business. Um, we and, and the other thing is, 
we're here to serve. So just like our homeowners, we actually, our goal is not to sell houses. And you're like, what, how are you gonna do that? Our goal is to serve 500 families this year. Now, the truth is, we're gonna probably sell a bunch of houses by serving those 500 families, but sometimes it's just being informational. They may go with somebody else, but we can provide some ideas for them, uh, some contrast, we can answer questions, um, and then the vast majority of people we, we help move. So we are looking for people uh, right now in all of our markets uh, across the Bay Area, there's not one that we don't serve. Um, if you don't wanna work alone, if you want somebody beside you, somebody to encourage you, somebody to kind of kick you a little bit when you need you know, some boosts, we're here to do that and absolutely here to educate um, to make you the best, very best at this job. So if somebody had questions or wanted to apply, where would they do that and how could they contact you? Yeah, so there's many ways. One, you could call me. I'm not going to post on this my phone number, but uh, you could DM Christina. But you can go on our website, rickfullerinc.com, uh, and there's a, a career path there for the things you do. It's pretty simple. Uh, I will tell you that we interview way more than join our team. And um, because it's important that we're right for you mm -hmm. and you're right for us. And uh, that's not an experience you're going to find in other most other places. Um, but that's an experience that we can walk down together. I promise it'll be educational regardless, uh, but start the process by uh, hitting our careers button and uh, getting in contact with us. And uh, depending on where you're at in your career, if you're brand new, uh, my uh, friend and partner Joe will call you if you're brand spanking new. Um, we can share with you about our Kaplan uh, Institute. And uh, if you're experienced, I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to tell you all the things that are great about a team. And I promise you, I'm going to share the things that you're going to have to decide mm -hmm. are, you know, worth you not doing anymore or, you know, changing. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh, any final words of advice? If you're going to do it, do it. <laughs> Don't wait. I had many times, you know, uh, and I talked to people, well, if just if this thing happens, just one more thing, I'll mm. do this. All that time is wasted time. Whatever you decide to do, go in all out. It is a job, folks. It's a cool job, but it is a job. So awesome. and I, I personally would join a team. Maybe don't join our team, but I would join a team in today's, especially with the challenges we have. Um, there is a belief that in five years, things that will be remaining is big data and teams. Hmm. So get on a team. Hmm. That's great information. Thank you so much, Brian. Uh, thank you for joining me today and for giving us all uh, great advice and practical steps that we can start this career and join the team. So I appreciate that. Uh, you can go to rickfuller.com backslash career to apply or to learn more. And you can also go to rickfullerinstitute.com to learn more about our Kaplan School. Join us next week as we discuss things to look for when investing in property. And we'll have your partner, Joe Seeley, on the line. So great, nice. information. Yeah. great information coming down the pipe on real estate investing. So you don't want to miss that. Thank you for spending part of your day with us. And remember what Rick always says, not only real estate is hazardous to your wealth. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Christina. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.